Hi Gokdina, in today's video I'm going to show you how to answer questions relating to Pythagoras' theorem correctly and the first thing that we need to be aware of when we're talking about Pythagoras' theorem is that it always relates to right angled triangles. Again that might seem very obvious from doing it in class but when it comes up on the junior cert exams students sometimes forget and try and use the theorem on non right angled triangles. Okay, So the first thing you need to just make sure is that when you are looking at a triangle just double check that it is actually right angled. Okay, the next thing then is just understanding how Pythagoras' theorem actually works. And when we did this in class, we did a nice discovery-based lesson where I gave out three squares. And I asked the students to put, to arrange the squares so that their outlines or their edges formed some form of a right angle triangle. And eventually the students came up with what was on the left-hand side. And then the space that they had in the middle of the three squares made up a right angle triangle. And this was basically a way of showing how Pythagoras' theorem works. So let's say, for example, that we know that the length of this side of the triangle is 3. And we know that the length of the, um, the other side here on the left is 4. And what the students did then is they said, OK, well, how would I find the area of this square? We do 3 multiplied by 3, which gives me 9. And how would I find the area of the other square? I do 4 times 4, and that gives me 16. Obviously, we don't know units in this, so we'll just leave it at that for the moment. And what the students discovered then was if they worked out the area of this square here, it came to be 25. Now, what relationship does the number 25 have with the number 9 and the number 16? Well, I'm sure you've all spotted it. 25 is equals to 9 plus 16. So what they were able to discover was that when you add together the two smaller squares, which are made up of the sides of the triangle, the two smaller sides of the triangle, you get the square on the longest side of the triangle, which we then said we found out that the name that we call that was the hypotenuse. So if we know that the area of that entire square is 25 square units, then to go backwards to find the length of this hypotenuse, we just had to find the square root of 25 which was 5. And that's basically how Pythagoras' theorem works. So this is a nice um, picture to have a quick look at just to explain to you again how Pythagoras' theorem works. So if you find the square of the two smaller sides of the triangle in this diagram you can see they're being referred to as a and as B, when you square those two together to get the um, areas of their squares, you'll get the area of the larger square, which is C squared, and then to get the length of the hypotenuse, you square root it. So therefore, in this triangle, the hypotenuse would be of length root 25, which is 5. So what we're going to do now is have a look at a couple of questions and see how we can apply Pythagoras' theorem. Okay guys, so in example one we can see that we know that uh, our two smaller sides of our triangle are 6 and 8 and what we we're trying to discover is x which is our hypotenuse. So again, what we're trying to remember there is which order we need to carry things out in. So step one is that we are going to square the two smaller sides. So we're going to find uh, the square of 6 which is 36 and we're going to square 8 which gives me 64. So that's step one. Step two, because we're trying to find the hypotenuse, which is the longer side, we are now going to add together those two areas because when they are added together, it should give me the area of this large square. So we're going to do 36 plus 64, which is equals to 100. However, we're not finished yet because now we found the area of that square. We don't want the entire area. We just want one of the lengths of the sides of the square. So we're going to go backwards from the area by square rooting 100. And therefore, the answer is going to be 10 centimetres. And what that means is that the hypotenuse of this triangle is 10 centimetres. Our little reality check or common sense check check will then say okay 10 centimeters is longer than 6 and 8 centimeters and the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right angle triangle so hopefully we've done that correctly. Okay so a slightly trickier example here where we know the hypotenuse is 15 centimeters and we know one of the shorter side is 10 centimeters and we're trying to find the other short side. 
The steps in this one are very similar, but it's very important that you understand what we're doing. So we know that the area of the biggest square is going to be equals to 15 squared, because that's going to give me the area of this big square here. And we also know that the area of this smaller square is going to be 10 by 10, which is 100. So we need to think, well, how do I then find the area of this square? And this is where instead of adding them together, the subtraction comes in. So step one is going to be the exact same. We're going to do 15 squared, which gives us 225. And we're going to do 10 squared, which gives us 100. Step two is the crucial one. Because it's a shorter side missing, so S for shorter side, S for subtract. We're going to subtract the square of the hypotenuse away from the shorter side. And that's going to leave us with 125 centimetres squared. So that is after leaving us with the area of the one of the other smaller sides of the triangle. And to finish this then, we need to find the length of that side. So step three is the same as before. We are going to find the square root of 125. And that answer is going to give us a... Um, decimal which is fine generally in the exams they'll tell us to round it to maybe two decimal places so that's what I'm going to do so the answer is going to be 11.18 centimeters again let's do a quick common sense check the hypotenuse is 15 centimeters which means my answer should be smaller and yes it is it's smaller than 15 so hopefully I've done that correctly Okay guys, so for this example we're going to have a look at a word problem because I think that's one of the most um, important ways of how we can relate Pythagoras' theorem to real life examples and why it, it does come in so handy. So we're told that a ladder is placed five foot away from a house. The ladder comes up to 12 foot on the side of the house. How long is the ladder? Now when you read that first of all, it might not... Uh, you know, become apparent straight away that this is a Pythagoras' theorem question only for that I'm telling you now in this video it is. However, as we've said before, when you're in the junior search or in the leaving search or whatever it is and you're looking at a problem and you're thinking, mm, I'm really not sure what to do here, draw a picture. So that's step one in this one and it's so, so important. So I'm going to draw myself a little sketch of a ladder against a house. So obviously... This is my lovely house. This is the road that it's on. And then this is my very dodgy drawing of a ladder. Okay, so let's think about it. We're told, first of all, that the ladder is placed five foot away from a house. Now, think about how a ladder works. The fact that it's placed away from it means it must be along here. The other thing we're told then is the ladder comes up to 12 uh, foot on the side of the house so that means that basically it reaches up to 12 feet which is along here and they want us to work out how long the ladder is so they want us to work this length out here which we're going to call x if you look at that slightly dotty drawing that i have drawn you will be able to see or hopefully imagine anyway that this is a right angle because where a house um a wall meets the ground it should always meet at 90 degrees so that the house doesn't tumble over so i have the two shorter sides of my right angle triangle what am i trying to work out the hypotenuse so we're right back to our steps again so step one is we're going to square both the numbers so 12 multiplied by 12 gives me 144 and 5 times 5 gives me 25. Step 2 then is important because we need to make sure we're doing this the correct way around. If I'm trying to work out the hypotenuse, I'm going to add them together. So we're going to do 144 plus 25 and that's going to give me 169. Step three then is we think, well, that's the entire area. However, I don't want the entire area. I just want the length of the side. So I'm going to find the square root of 169 and that gives me 13 feet. So that means that the length of that ladder is 13 feet. Okay, so to finish off this video then, I'd like you to have a go at this question taken, fr taken from an exam question. So it says, according to the diagram, what is the altitude of the plane? 
and obviously no figure is not drawn to scale. So again, looking at this, you might not recognize immediately that it's Pythagoras' theorem, but as soon as you see the right angle reference and a triangle, that's the first thing I want you to think about. Can I use Pythagoras' theorem? And what I'm looking at in the picture is that I've been given a certain amount of information, maybe I can use Pythagoras to figure out the rest. So if you would pause the video now, have a go at finding out x and you can play the video to see how you get on. Okay, so to solve this question then you need to recognise I suppose what's going on. So as I said earlier, it's a right angle triangle. I've been given the hypotenuse and I've been given one of the smaller sides and I'm trying to work out the other side. So Pythagoras' theorem is perfect for this. So step one, as we've always done, is we're going to square the two sides. So I'm going to do 500 squared and that's going to give me... 250,000 and I'm going to do 400 squared and that's going to give me 160,000. This is the crucial part, step two. Do I add, do I subtract? So I'm trying to find a smaller side so that means that I have to subtract. So we're going to minus those two away from each other and when we subtract them we are going to get 90,000 and then step three is we need to then find the square root because I don't want the area so the square root of 90,000 is 300 and make sure I put in my correct units 300 meters again a quick reality check 300 meters and 400 meters are both smaller than my hypotenuse of 500 meters so that's a little check to hopefully mean that we've done it correctly